Doctors of Reddit, what is your most surprising I can't believe I need to have this conversation with an adult, story? Paramedic here, was driving with my partner and patient in the back, patient was fine, patient's skeezy boyfriend was riding in the front with me and apparently saw a golden opportunity to ask a question that had obviously been on his mind for some time, him, so when cats and dogs eat grass, that means they have cancer, right, me, um, number, no it does not, made for an awkwardly silent ride the rest of the way. Well it looks like she is about 30 days pregnant congrats. How can she be pregnant she is only around her brother. Well actually they don't follow the same moral code as you or I. Veterinarian. My fragile sanity wishes you had started with veterinarian lol. Not a doctor. Yet. But in a tech for 2 years. Mum comes in with her baby plus 2 more older kids. Complains that the baby hasn't pooped in a while and won't stop crying. As I'm settling them in with one of the nurses, the baby is bawling, like opera singer lungs bawling. Suddenly mom whips out a white plastic shopping bag and sticks an end in the kid's mouth. Says this is the only way she stops crying. Nurse and I share a look and immediately order an emergency x-ray on the kid's stomach. Turns out she had ingested a good amount of these bags and it was blocking up in her stomach. Big deal. Potentially life threatening. When we confront the mom about her baby feeding habits her only words of defense are well I checked all over the bag and I couldn't find anything that said non-edible. God hope this mother lost custody of her children. That the 30 plus cups of coffee he was drinking every day could possibly be the cause of his chief complaints of anxiety and insomnia. He said he was not willing to give this up or try decaf. 30 plus. Man I'm such an amateur. This will be a long story. When I was an internal medicine resident I came across a very nice 50 year old Dominican lady. She was well mannered but one could tell she was not the sharpest tool in the shed. As I was prepping her chart for our first visit, I noticed that she'd been seen by every single digestive disease MD in our hospital system. Not only that, she'd had every single procedure in the book, ranging from endoscopies up both holes and culminating in an exploratory laparotomy you open up to basically look inside you when we have no clue what's going on. All of this because for years she had one single complaint. She reported severe gnawing pain in her stomach. At this point I should mention that she was Spanish speaking only. Not only that she had a very heavy Dominican accent, and I was the first Hispanic doctor to ever see her. My first language is Spanish and even I had difficulty understanding her. So she comes in and after exchanging some first time pleasantries I politely ask her how she's doing. Sure enough although she was smiling and said she felt well she pointed at her belly and said it was biting again, and asked for the cream to kill it. At this point I got intrigued. Her medication list only mentioned a cream used for herpes breakthroughs. The previous fellow only mentioned in his note that in every single visit she only asked for the cream and nothing else. When I asked what she meant by the biting and what she intended to do with the cream, she very calmly tells me she intended to stick the cream up her bus in order to kill the bird living inside her. After delving more deeply into her story, it turns out she didn't have a medical condition. Ever since she was a little girl, she believed her had after eating whole quail egg. The bird had spawned inside her and gnawed away in her insides whenever she was very hungry. After a short visit to psych, she was diagnosed with a somatic type delusional disorder. No amount of medication or psychotherapy will cure her, but she was still a fully functional mother of two who paid her taxes and had to part time jobs. I reached out to every digestive disease doctor in out hospital system once more, to make sure she never receives an inappropriate invasive intervention. I've been following her now for 3 years and she's happy as one can be, considering she has a bird living inside her. While in dental school my friend pulled out several bombed out, technical term, teeth on her adult male. After the procedure was finished and post-op instructions we given, the man asked, so when should I expect my new teeth to grow and he was serious. My SO is a med student. He helped to diagnose a 40 year old woman who finally sought out a doctor after having open, festering wounds on her entire torso for over a year. The open wounds only appeared after more than a year of painful, visible lumps on her breasts. She had never sought treatment prior to this. SO had to inform her that her entire body was riddled with cancer, that there was no treatment to help her, and that she would be dead very soon. 
Her sister, who was there the entire time, began loudly proclaiming what a shame it was that nothing could ever have been done, and that hopefully someday we would be able to detect cancer sooner. So, watched the doctor explain that pretty much any other woman in the country would have gotten effective treatment at the first sign of the lumps. This was during breast cancer awareness month. I saw a patient who was concerned because she was still lactating, despite the fact that she stopped breastfeeding her twins two years ago. She said, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and find my husband sucking on the breasts. He says he's trying to drain the milk for me. I had to explain to her that breastfeeding her husband will lead to continued lactation. As a veterinarian, I had a 10 minute conversation with an owner explaining which side was the dog's left side medical assistance to a cataract surgeon here if you freaking sleep in your contact lenses long enough they will fuse to your eyes and will need surgery to have them removed yes you can go blind from this for the love of god don't sleep in your contact lenses got placed doing a rotation in the orthopedic floor of a big hospital in a rural area of southern california i was doing my rounds and saw patient out of bed and walking around the floor following a knee replacement she had a cane in her hand that she was carrying like as a solid or would carry a rifle i asked what she was doing and what she thought the cane was for she replied she thought the cane was for pushing people out of her way since she's now handicapped and it wasn't to help her walk on her post-op knee this is the first response that genuinely made me laugh out loud. I can just imagine some cranky old woman swatting people out of her way. Talking to the children poas of nursing home residents about vaccines. Most will just sign the flu shot form. Some believe it will give their 90 some grandpappy autism. Pharmacist, but comment still relates. Had a lady call and complaining that their husband's Viagra wasn't working. I then went on to explain to the patient's wife that in order for the medication to work, the patient needed some sort of stimulation. The lady just screamed a loud me and then hung up the phone. Still my favorite Viagra story. Client brings in her dog for a tick she tried to burn off. Looking, I see it's a nipple and tell her this. She says but he's a boy. How can he have nipples I say mom. Your husband has nipples. Blank stare. Then light bulb moment for her. My friend is a student doctor and is on placement at a small town doctor's office. She had a 70 ish year old woman come in with complaints of a small but painless growth that was visible at the back of her throat. Turns out it took her 70 years to notice her uvula. Not a doctor, but I regularly have people come in for eye examinations because when I take my glasses off things are blurry. Often these aren't passing comments during the exam, but the main reason for their visit to the clinic. During residency in an urban near USA city, I was in clinic. A very pleasant 50s something lady came in for a physical. Everything was going fine when she casually asks if there are any new vaccines out. She was up to date with everything so I asked if she had any specific concerns. She was casually asking to see if she could vaccinate her gay adult son against homosexuality. Very nice. Always had a smile on her face. Even when I broke the bad news to her. Patient comes to a 19 year old male. I'm getting his history. Why are you here today? Every morning when I wake up my stomach hurts. How long has it been hurting? All my life. Well what is different today that's made you come here? My girlfriend doesn't think that is normal. More questions. Exam by a physician. Lab tests. The abdominal pain always goes away after he eats. Always. He wakes up hungry. He thinks it is pain. Not a doctor, but I'm a former special forces medic and I treated indigenous populations in Iraq, Afghanistan and several other Middle Eastern countries. Some of the patients and their families asked incredible things of me, such as putting brains back inside after an explosion took half the head off. But I have never been as incredulous as when I had to explain wrong hole to a very old tribal elder who was wondering why he couldn't father any children. My mom tells it so much better, but here's a try. My mom was the head nurse at a clinic here in Houston in the 80s. She worked for an old World War II doctor that had gone into private practice, old school GP, when he returned back to the states. 
Well one afternoon she told me that they had a patient come in that was running a high fever and was complaining of pain in her pelvic area. Mum also tells me that there was a stench coming from the woman's lap that could only be described as enough to gag a maggot off a meat wagon. She begins to interview the patient who told her that her and her boyfriend had been sexually active and that she has been in pain since. She thought that the woman may have contracted an STD and asked her to undress and wait for the doctor to examine her. The doctor arrives and closes the door, only to reopen it a few seconds later mentioning about the need for fresh air. The doctor noticed that there was a vaginal discharge began to question the patient about her sex life. Was it protected, non-protected, etc. According to mom, the patient told her no doc, we always use a rubber. The doctor looked down then noticed that there was a small rubber band extending from the woman's vagina. But the doctor reached in with his gloved hand and pulled it out. What came next can only be described as a magician pulling the magic cloth out of someone's mouth. One rubber band after another came out over the course of the next 10 minutes. Finally once they were all removed, the doctor had the talk with the woman about sex education and that rubber bands were not a successful contraceptive and not what they meant by wearing a rubber and then wrote her a prescription for ABX. Not a doctor, dental hygienist, had to explain that brushing your teeth with Comet, the cleaner, was not a good way to clean your teeth to a 40 year old woman. Also had to tell a woman that painting her teeth with white fingernail polish was a bad idea. A 32 year old grown man asked me if the hot spells he was experiencing at night meant he was going through menopause. Well, it's not called womenopause. I had to explain to a grown man I still work with that tampons don't break down in a woman's urine after they were finished using them. He's been married 12 years. It was not his best day. My mother helps the Amish get dental care. One Amish woman complained that she needed new dentures. When asked why she thought so, she replied, Well, I've lost weight, and you know that when you lose weight, you lose it in your gums first. Doctors and dentists, if you're looking for a community to serve, the Amish can truly use your help. I could write a book about the things I've seen. I was a newly minted graduate with fresh and optimistic views on my life as a doctor. Second week in came this old lady and her very dysfunctional family. They would argue and complain about everything. From the food, the nurses they didn't like and every single medical decision we made. She was very very sick so her management was just as complicated. She had several children and they all didn't like one another and would not talk to one another. Each time we would have to explain a long update to every single one of them because they are entitled to hear it from a doctor. One of these stories being sitting down and explaining why you don't give Gatorade as an IV drip. They did not understand why we were giving salt water to her. Conversation with her son. Look she likes Gatorade. She is drinking it so why can't you give it to her through her drip? We explain why. Son frowns. But it's isotonic. We explain again. Yes but Gatorade has more electrolytes. We explain again. Salt water just seems to be too cheap. Can't you give her something else closer to Gatorade? That has electrolytes. Continues for 2 hours. Wash and repeat every day during her admission. Afterwards I told my fiance. He opened up a scene from Idiocracy on YouTube and I just sat there with my mouth open for a while. <laughs> while on dermatological rotation, a Middle Eastern patient saw me with what she described as some funny, itching growth in her butt crack. Some quick investigation revealed it to be a severe case of genital warts. I explained the diagnosis and that it was an STD until she shockingly assured that she was still a virgin. Now virginity is a big issue for young Muslim women, or perhaps their families even more, but apparently that doesn't cover anal and therefore no birth control in the form of, say, condoms was needed. EMT here, I had a grown adult try to explain to Emmy that someone else crap his pants. Got toned out for finger pain at a homeless shelter at 0200. We get there and the guy jumps in the truck with very mild swelling to the tip of his right index finger. Here's how the conversation went. Me. So what happened? Patient. I smoked some M and then I fell asleep in my bunk and I woke up next to my bunk and my finger hurt and there was poop. Me. There was poop? Did you fall in poop? Patient. No no. Like in my pants. Me. So. You pooped your pants? Patient, no, it wasn't me, me, so let me get this straight, you smoked M, took a nap, 
rolled out of bed in your sleep, hurt your finger, and someone else came along and crap in your pants before you woke up? Patient, yeah, it wasn't me. My brother is a general practitioner in rural Tennessee, enough said, right? He says most of his patient visits go about like this, MD well, person, you're pre-diabetic, have high blood pressure, and are complaining about joint pain. Have you been exercising and cutting out sugar and cups? Person yeah I have, doc, but it doesn't seem to help. Do you have any better meds you could prescribe? MD well, let's talk about your diet. How much water do you drink a day? Person I don't like water, so I get extra ice in my sweet tea every day to make sure I get enough water. MD, explains how that's not enough water by a long shot. How much sweet tea are you drinking every day? Those can have a lot of sugar in them. Person well I get a large one from Hardee's McDonald's wherever on my way to work with my breakfast, and another one on my way home for dinner, then I have a glass or two when I get home. MD well, that's a lot of sugar, and a lot of fast food if you are eating it twice a day. What do you eat at home? Person I don't like to cook so I usually don't eat anything but little Debbie snack cakes at home. MD those have a lot of sugar too. Person I thought that all I had to do was cut out Mountain Dew. Now you're saying I can't eat my food or my snacks. What are you suggesting I do? Eat salads for every meal. Why can't you just up my meds? I'm not a doctor, but my mom doesn't have a good grasp on the reproductive system so I had to be the one to explain that. 1. Getting my tubes removed did not remove my ability to get a period. 2. That we women have a urethra, a vagina, and an anus. Babies do not come from the urethra. This one was strange because she had me and my sister so. 3. That when you neuter a dog, you just remove the balls, not the red rocket too. China Taiwan's sex ed was severely lacking. So my mom, until she was in her 20s believed that if you sat on a seat still warm on the bus that a guy sat in before you, you can get pregnant. If you kissed a guy, you could get pregnant. I'm still finding out. Years later, misconceptions that my poor mother has about reproduction and explaining things to her. <laughs> Had to explain to an adult you have to brush all the sides of the teeth. Like, no, just the side that shows when you smile is not enough. And yes flossing is not just a thing for rich people. Had a patient in our high priority area for DKA. Sugar was in the 800s. Stomach pain, nausea, vomiting and the such. Pulled Burger King and gummy worms out of his backpack and proceeded to eat them. Like bro do you even know what diabetes is? Non-compliance and lack of medical knowledge is a big thing in Detroit. Patient comes in at 2am for insomnia. Clearly tweaking her brains out. Heart rate 200. Can't sit still. Bouncing off the walls. I suggest maybe easing up on the coke. But doctor, I love coke. K. I imagine her pulling out a crap load of coke on the spot and just ramming it to her nose. I was working in GP and had a patient scheduled for an appointment. Looked through his notes to gain an idea of why he may be seeing me and saw he'd been seen a few times with knee pains, shoulder pains and the like. The guy's in his 70s so probably just arthritis. I'm thinking I'll do an examination of his sore joints and ask a few questions. Prescribe some painkillers and it'll be a quick one. Call him in and he walks and sits down and is cheery as anything. What seems to be the problem then? Sir, I notice you've had some issues recently with sore joints I ask. He then proceeds to tell me about this sore knee. So I check his knee and take a history and it all seems fine. Ask anything else and he's like oh actually my neck is sore too. So I check his neck and nothing untoward to be found there either. At this point he's like okay well thanks doc I'll be off then. I say to him oh good glad we could help. And you have no other pains at all before you go? He then sits back down and tells me he's been having central, crushing chest pain radiating down his left arm and into his jaw since last night and has been feeling breathless and when it happened he had an impending sense of doom. I know a lot of you won't be doctors here but I'm sure you all recognize signs of an MI there. He had all the classic textbook symptoms, called an ambulance and he was rushed to hospital for PCI. Both my parents are doctors. My dad told me about an extremely religious male patient who was concerned about his nocturnal emissions. He saw it as a offense to God and wanted to know what he could do to stop it. My dad's response, well, it's gotta go somewhere guy. Doctors have read it, 
What was your how the FCK did you survive that moment? Second year during my neurosurgery residency, woman got shot execution style, kneel down on both knees, shot in the back of the head, think boondock saints style, by her husband, who then shot himself. In the other patient was barely breathing and had a hemoglobin of 5.0. There was so much scatter from the metal artifact on the CT of her head that we didn't know what we were getting into. But we brought her emergently to the ort to do an exploratory craniectomy. We made incision and took off a flap of this thick, mangled skull where she was shot in the back of her head. Her shards of skull tore a massive hole in her superior sagittal sinus. Big brain vein that we had to repair. We found some small fragments of bullet but no big slug. When I went back to repair the portion of skull we cut out to access her brain, I found the bullet embedded in her skull. As we get older, our skull thickens but this girl was young. She had an abnormally thick portion of her skull in the area where she was shot. After the case was over I looked back at her CT and it was a miraculous abnormality. The patient ended up surviving with no neurological deficits. She is a completely normal and high functioning individual in society at this time. This strange thickened portion of her skull saved her life. If she would have been shot anywhere else in her head at point blank, she would have undoubtedly lost her life. I'm not one for fate or higher power but this story always gives me goosebumps. Humans are like an iPhone. Sometimes they can survive a 10 foot drop, and sometimes they break when they get tossed on the bed. Not a doctor, but I'm a firefighter so I see my fair share of trauma. About a year ago, we responded to a call that went out as an individual who had a car fall on his face. He was hotboxing in his garage while working underneath his car that was supported by scissor jacks. Something to note, the car didn't have any tires on the front end where he was working. One of the scissor jacks had slipped out from underneath the car, and the whole weight of the car landed directly onto the side of his head with no tires to stop the fall. We got our rubber airbags out, lifted the car, pulled him out, and got him onto a stretcher. After taking 2,500 pounds of weight to the head, he somehow got out of it with a fractured orbital and a laceration on his cheek. I hate scissor jack, never trusted them. This is also why jack stands exist. First year of my core surgical training I was on call in a very small rural hospital. This hospital only had two doctors on at night, me and a medical trainee, and no emergency doctors. It's about 11pm and this guy, 26 comes in after being in a fight, blood pumping from his nose which was clearly fractured. I suspected he probably had other facial fractures underneath but he was awake and talking to me, otherwise seemed fine. I spent about 45 minutes trying to stop the blood, using all sorts of nose packs, pressure, even tried a catheter balloon to try and tamponade it. Nothing was working, and he was starting to go into shock, and I was basically crapping myself at this stage. Based on his vitals I'd estimated he'd lost almost 1.5 liters of blood so far. Nearest proper surgical hospital was 45 minutes away, and my consultant was at home, 25 minutes from the hospital. Eventually I got 4 bags of Oneg from the lab. The lab tech happened to be in, which was very lucky, put this guy in the back of an ambulance, still bleeding, and sent him blue light to the surgical center in the city. I got a phone call about 3 hours later from a surgeon at the other hospital saying he had brought the patient to theater and been able to control the situation. He was probably 15 minutes from dead. If you come into that kind of small hospital with that much bleeding, all stats say you're in trouble. The guy was very lucky his friends got him in so quickly. That's the worst thing about working in a rural hospital. Not only are you understaffed but people in rural communities always have the most inventive gnarliest injuries. Well done for saving his life. I was a surgical resident in a small town hospital. We got paged to see a patient for a speared piece of driftwood through the leg. We were thinking it was a nicked femoral artery and discussing if this poor kid needed amputation when we saw him he was standing on the skewered leg taking a pee. Turns out the wood missed every single one of the vital vessels and no fracture, just muscular damage. Junior doc on the trauma team. 
does Teresa's fly open to reveal a man carrying a second blood soaked man in his arms. Get him onto a stretcher and it is clear he has gunshot wound to his chest and has gone into cardiac arrest. A systole. Chest compressions start and within minutes the A&D consultant is performing an open thoracotomy in order to start cardiac massage. A cardiothoracics join us quickly and get to work on the heart. A hole in the right ventricle is identified and plugged with a Foley catheter. All the while bag after bag of O-neg is being pushed into the patient in an attempt to replace everything that had pumped out of his heart and into his thoracic cavity. 15-20 minutes into this the impossible happens. We get our OSE. The heart starts beating in its own. Patient is taken directly to theater where the hole is definitively repaired and bilateral chest drains are inserted to drain the blood filling his lungs. Technically the plural space. Somehow his heart continued beating and after a couple weeks on it too, the patient is returned to the trauma ward awake and alert. Several weeks, some mild hypoxic brain injury, and a gnarly chest scar later and he walks off the ward with his dad, the man who carried him in. ETA definition of ROSC. That's like something out of a TV series. I had a patient that attempted suicide with an AR-15 under the chin. Put a hole in the soft tissues of the floor of his mouth, in his tongue, in his hard palate, and then split the hemispheres of his brain perfectly, finally popping out the top of his skull. He recovered fully. Emergency nurse. Once had a guy come in who had been cutting a tree with a chainsaw when it hit a knot in the wood and kicked up into his neck. Finished cutting the tree because he knew his wife would make him get rid of the chainsaw. Put a towel on it and drove himself to the hospital. CT showed no vascular damage. Simple wash out and home the next day. One of the paramedics who saw him said to his patient that's a real emergency. Why don't we ever get those? Finished cutting the tree because he knew his wife would make him get rid of the chainsaw. Reminds me of a story I heard from a teacher. He knew a farmer who got his hand caught in some machinery, and mangled it up pretty good. Put a glove on over his hand to keep it one piece while he finished his work, then went to the hospital. Every time I think this question, the answer is usually M. One guy got hit in the face hard enough to let air into his brain cavity and was being an absolute -er, which seemed to be normal for him, and literally asked got any M when I offered some pain relief. To my understanding, he recovered without any need for surgery. The human body is both scarily resilient and scarily fragile. I was working in the emergency department when a toddler came in after falling out of a three-story window completely unharmed. The sad thing was they were from a rough neighborhood and the mum hadn't noticed for about half an hour. Apparently the friendly apartment pot smokers found found him, checked him over and sat with him for half an hour and when mum didn't show up went to find her. The child was admitted overnight mostly for social reasons but it's just amazing how well kids bounce. Not a doctor but paramedic. Once went a car wreck where a drunk drove head first into the corner of a brick bridge at 100 miles per hour. Took a huge wedge out of the bottom of the bridge and left the car about one stroke four of its normal length. All the impact was on the driver's side. Turned up only two minutes after the crash and fully expected it to be a fatality. Walked round to the driver's side and somehow he was fully conscious but squeezed into the only space left in the car. Took almost 3 hours to get him out and on extracting him out he had absolutely nothing wrong with him other than being a pee up Eris hole. Still think how the frick did he survive that. Not a doctor, but a friend's story. He'd been feeling like crap for a long time. Went to the doctor. Doctor ordered a bunch of blood tests, and ordered them on a rush basis. The lab calls the doctor to be him out. Why the frick did you make us rush these tests doctor is confused. Lab is like, the guy is clearly dead, so what's the freaking rush? Doctor calls him, tells him to not drive but to get himself to emergency ASAP. Guy was a type 1 diabetic, hadn't realized it until way later in life, and apparently his blood work suggested he was a corpse rather than a living person. He's still doing fine. I work in the lab and we have had several not compatible with life results where the patient's body had so slowly become accustomed to the bad levels that they were actually doing only poorly instead of dead. The human body is a magical thing. Not a doctor, yet, but during one of my night shift as a medical student, I had to take in charge a patient who came to the air for a car accident. Well, that's quite common. What is not is that he came by himself, 
from 40 kms by calling a taxi because his car was absolutely wrecked in the accident. Normally, when your car ends up upside down, after 2 or 3 rollovers at 60 km per hour, which the patient did, you are not really fine. However, he was totally okay. No broken bone, no head trauma, no abdominal pain, nothing. He just came to the ab because he had little dermabrasions over his knees and one elbow, and it hurts when it rubs against my clothes. Three band-aids later, and he was good to go. Gotta be the seatbelt that saved him. Eater. Airbags probably too. Not a doctor, but a fellow worker took a 35 pound steel plate being propelled by 3770 c, equivalent to 188.5 car tires, to the face, sent him 15 feet in the air, and 40 feet back, broke every bone in his face, lived and back to work 8 months later. Patient, not as cool as most of these, but I was puking for 3 days straight before going into urgent care, I wasn't even going to to go in, but my family said I looked awful and I eventually relented, they said I had appendicitis, due to a mix up I didn't get operated on for over a day later, when they went in, my appendix was gangrenous and had basically disintegrated, turns out it had burst ruptured days ago, normally, this floods your body with toxins and you die, but apparently my colon was positioned in such a way that it blocked that from happening. I was in the hospital for another week before my digestive system restarted and had to have bile pumped out of my stomach. All in all though, not a terrible experience. This sounds too similar to a Yelp review. Would almost die again? 7 stroke 10. Intern year doing surgery. Guy gets brought in for a gunshot wound to the head. He was working at a jeweler that got robbed. His co-worker was black bagged at the scene. He gets brought into the trauma bay and it's pretty hectic because GSW to the head and well he's alive. But not only is he alive he's following commands but not speaking. Probably from the shock. Cops are giving us reports saying he was likely shot with a .357 snub nose they recovered at the scene. So we do our primary and secondary survey and all this guy has is a single wood wound to his left frontal scalp where the bullet went in. And so the team hasn't really seen something like this before. Sure a GSW to the head wasn't new but this guy was otherwise completely fine. The decision was made to get a quick frontal and late head x-ray to verify where the bullet was before proceeding to CT. While we don't see any bullet on the films, there's no bullet on the board or bed or within the patient's clothes. The man was shot in the head and the bullet bounced off his skull. CT showed no fracture even. It was wild. Never seen anything like that since. Our never broke he bone approves. I'm a researcher rather than a doctor, but during my undergrad my anatomy tutor told us of an interesting case study. A woman in the same department had been in a car accident going a considerable speed. The seatbelt failed to lock and her face flew into the steering wheel. Her mouth, nose, cheekbones and forehead were shattered, yet she suffered no brain damage. Apparently, the front of her face acted as a crumple zone and the fact her skull shattered meant the cranial swelling didn't cause any damage because the brain had more space to swell in two. She needed significant reconstructive surgery, but a year later she and my tutor teamed up in a research project. They used her case as the basis for looking into new ways to treat severe head injuries and develop new treatment protocols depending on where the skull had taken damage. They basically found out that, if you're going to have a head injury, try and get hit in the face and not the temples because you're much more likely to survive. My sister had a similar accident. She was drunk and fell from a third story balcony. She caught her foot on the way down almost tearing it off, and face planted the ground. Her face absorbed the impact, her ankle is fused, and her face is back to normal, except for a slightly fattened nose. Psych patients definitely win this one. This schizophrenic woman thought she was an angel and had wings, went off of her meds and tried jumping out of the 4th floor balcony. Half her bones were shattered, her skull and jaw were fractured, which had to be wired, but she miraculously survived. All her words come out weird and there are scars all over her body but she's alive. Shen still thinks she's an angel. Farmer was driving a tractor with one of those huge rolls of hay on the back. The hay was not secured correctly so when he stopped it rolled forward over him and bent him in half. All he had was two compression fractures in his lumbar region. 
Not a doctor, but a patient. My husband took me to the local hospital's ED for ongoing severe lower abdominal pain. I figured uterus. The nurses took blood, hooked me up to an IV, and gave me a little pain medicine. A nurse I hadn't yet seen came into the ED room looking very nervous and told me I was being admitted as my platelet count was 6000. My husband and I were like, what? The nurse was very surprised I had no symptoms like bruising, nose bleeds, and blood in urine or stool. He looked very concerned and the medical team rushed to get me into a room. The only symptoms I had were fatigue and heavy menstrual flow. Both symptoms had been my companion since I started my period at 11 years old. The next morning a hematologist came to my room and explained my diagnosis and that it was entirely idiopathic. He told me I was lucky to not have had crazy internal bleeding, bleeding into my brain or a stroke. He prescribed a regimen of 60 mg of prednisone daily, which I was on for a year and a half. Not recommended. It was awful. The idiopathic thrombocytopenia made no progress. It was finally decided to proceed with a splenectomy. Recovery was brutal. Having a huge incision down the length of your abdomen makes everyday tasks very difficult and painful. Almost 5 years later, my platelet count is normal. My period can go to huck in a hand basket, though. Not a doctor but I've seen a guy walk into a holding a bandaid over his eye saying he needs someone to pull the bullet out. My mind was freaking blown. To get shot and walk it off. An elderly lady had a massive brain hemorrhage, was transferred to terminal care to the health center and patient ward I was working at as the doctor. Her prognosis was that she would die at any moment. There was no treatment. She was comatose, but breathing spontaneously through a tracheotomy tube. A week passed, with no medications, no food, no fluids, still alive. Then she began to stir, came conscious, delirious, but conscious. So we started IV, fluids, appropriate medications, and eventually physiotherapy. After a few months she moved into the local nursing home, lived for a few years. She had profound dementia but was able to move. I wonder if the air moisturizing device in the room, because of the tracheotomy, kept her hydrated, because a healthy person would generally not survive a week without fluids. Not a doctor. My dad who is one told me this story once. He has this 12 year old patient, let's call him Tim, and everyone in the hospital firmly believes he's immortal. Tim was born with a bad heart and is constantly in and out of the IQ. By in and out of the IQ, he goes in almost once or twice a month. 9 out of 10 admissions, Tim flatlines. Strangely, Tim always comes back, even if you don't resuscitate him. I'd say Tim flatlined about 15-ish times in total. It's at the point that whenever Tim flatlines, nobody panics. Not even his mom in the first 3 times she fell on the floor crying. Hey guys, Tim's vitals are dropping. Again? Whew. The kid's definitely going for a record. Tim's pretty chill about it too. He talks about his IQ trips like how a normal kid talks about a mildly eventful day at school. Nobody knows how TF does Tim always come back. He just does. Frankly, I'm surprised the media hasn't done a story about it BC it's freaking metal. Okay, now I want the annual updates on Tim. Tim. Reached the big 3-0 today Tim's had a good year and the IQ has been awfully quiet without his resilient spirit. Not yet a doctor, but I work as a paramedic in soccer events. Being from Argentina, it can be pretty freaking intense. There was this time when we were at the stadium with my colleagues and three guys carry a fourth guy, covered in blood and totally unconscious. His pulse rate was berserk and we got kinda worried. While we start strapping him to the stretcher, I asked the other dudes WTF had happened, and they told me he fainted and fell down the stairs, and as he didn't respond we gave him some C to wake him up. We rushed him to the ambulance and within the first 10 minutes, the guy walks out and asks for a sandwich. Humans work in mysterious ways. A patient in his late 90s was admitted to our hospice for terminal care, i.e. to die, because of untreatable multi-level bowel obstruction, confirmed on CT scan, and clinically obvious from his swollen abdomen and profuse vomiting. The guy was, however, absolutely charming and completely at peace with this. He did want discomfort, and felt he had had a good life. He was scared to eat because of the vomiting it caused, if your bowel is blocked then any eating has to go back out the way it came in. Otherwise he was comfy enough with just a little pain relief. 
He was also lovely to chat at, very reflective and articulate in his speech and mannerisms. He had been told he had days, possibly hours, to live by the surgeons at the local hospital, and he barely drank anything, and ate literally nothing. This continued for two months, and though he lost a tremendous amount of weight and physical capability it seemed that during this time his bowel obstruction had spontaneously unobstructed. We ended up getting him home. The sad thing is, however, he had completely come to terms with his death. He is now still petrified of eating, and believes super strongly that his bowel is going to obstruct again which it may. He just doesn't ever want to go through that experience again and I do sometimes wonder if he would have been better off dying peacefully with us. Carotid blowout following free flap reconstruction in an oral cancer case. Had a post blowout HB of 30. No idea how she got away with it. Also when working at a military hospital, the guy whose parachute didn't open. And he ended up with just a fracture cheekbone? Like, what? I am not a doctor but when I around 23 I was stubborn and didn't go to the doctors for feeling weak and numb all the time with some blackouts. I brushed it off until I literally couldn't get up to walk to the bathroom. Thinking it was just a cold or flu, when I finally made it to the my blood count was a 3. Regular is around 14. Doctor said he didn't know how I was alive still. Imagine a doctor walking in all confused and being like, son, ya don't got no blood. Early years in medical school I saw a surgery of a policeman who was shot in head in a gunfight. The bullet went through his skull and brain. With my experience in games and movies I always assumed a head shot is instant death but that man survived it and I was in shock how this can happen. Turns out in many cases a head shot can be survived. Sorry for my English is not good. Your English is pretty good. I understood you easily. Close bracket. Emergency physician. I had a patient that was shot 9 times, 3 bullets to the head. He didn't call an ambulance, he brought himself to the emergency department. And by that I mean he drove himself to the emergency department. The 3 bullets in his head somehow didn't enter the cranium so his brain was just fine. One of them entered his cheek and went underneath the skin to swing all the way around to the back of his head. But he was discharged the same day. Not a doctor so sorry but till contribute. I will never ever forget a guy coming into the emergency ward with a freaking serrated combat knife sticking directly out of the top of his head. He was walking himself in. To this day I cannot comprehend that. I read this one where this chick tripped over while cooking or something then started experiencing a bad headache. She drove to the emergency room and found out that she had a knife sticking out of her head. Doctors and nurses of Reddit. Have you ever witnessed a couple have a child that was obviously not the father's? What happened? Had two women deliver on the same unit, same baby daddy, he would go back and forth between rooms. That's wild. A hospital where I was a med student had a baby born with high drops, which is where a baby gets two bad copies of a red blood cell gene, one from each parent. Baby died shortly after birth. Parents came in for genetic counseling and testing revealed the woman's husband did not carry the alpha thalassemia gene. The couple asked what was the chance another baby of theirs would have this condition the doctors were honest and told them 0%. They left it at that. Not a doctor, but my wife grew up in a really small town, but wasn't born there. When she got her first crush on a boy and told her best friend, the friend was like did you talk to your mom yet? Apparently, adultery was so widespread in this area, it was common practice for girls to talk to their mom about crushes and who the crush's parents were so they didn't end up dating their half-sibling. There's a song about that. Guy wants to court a girl but his dad keeps telling him no. That girl is ya sister, but you mama don't know. He talked to his mama and she says, go man, go. Yo daddy ain't ya daddy, but ya daddy don't know. Had a mum to be who had narrowed the options for Babadidi down to her top 3. She was having a c-section and didn't understand why all 3 potential dads couldn't come into theater. She then asked if we could rotate them through, and maybe she'd let the one that was there when baby came out be the real daddy. It took all my professionalism to smile politely. I've just imagined a 9 year old one up a kid from gay couple by saying ye well I have 3 dads beat that. 
A nurse friend of mine told me about helping with a vasectomy when the doctor saw that the patient, a married father of two children was clearly infertile and would have been all his life. Due to the man taking Valium before the local anesthetic the doctor made the guy come back for a follow up where he had to explain the man's medical condition to him. No idea what the fallout was. My brother's best friend didn't resemble his father while growing up, so he became more and more suspicious. The father eventually did a DNA test, when my brother's friend was 11 or 12, and found out it's not his. The parents split up with the older daughter, 16, going with the father because she resembled him so he was sure about her. Poor situation for everyone. The kid lost his father in that situation. He knew nothing different and it wasn't his fault. Talk about an attachment disorder starting point. Not quite on topic but African American babies usually are much lighter skin right after birth and then tend to get a little darker. The nurses usually warn the fathers about this but I guess no one had told this guy. We were in a c-section and the baby came out significantly lighter than the father and we all saw his face drop. Thankfully the nurses saw it and told him and told him that the baby looked exactly like him. Laughed about it later. I worked in a restaurant right after high school, and there was a couple who worked there too. When the girlfriend got pregnant, she dipped out on him and moved back to her family in Alaska. After a month or so the boyfriend got enough cash together to follow her. He dropped out of college and got a job on her dad's fishing boat to support his new family. Months later the baby is born and it becomes more obvious why the girl took off. Because they're both white and that baby was black. That dude was a class act. It's too bad his girl couldn't work up the courage to tell him the truth instead of just bailing out. Now she looks even worse. I'm a midwife. I once had a woman come to my clinic unannounced. She wasn't my patient but I'm in HS so saw her anyway. She had a man with her. She knew she was about 3 months pregnant but hadn't come for any antenatal care. I asked if she'd had made love the night before. She'd come in because she'd had a little bleeding. I looked at the partner as mum said yes and he said nothing to do with me. I'm just the baby daddy turns out she had a new boyfriend at home. This was just the guy she'd been with 3 months before. I popped her up on the table to examine her and straight away had to tell her that she was actually about 5 months along but I would arrange a scan to confirm. The dude just got up and walked out. Turns out there was a third guy 5 months ago. I had a patient like this. She was like 28 weeks or something. Pretended her last period was 2 months prior to my visit with her and that this boyfriend of 3 months was the only potential father. When I explained that he was not, she asked when was the latest she could get an abortion. Answer. Quite a while ago in our area. My mum's friend has 3 sons to her ex-husband. Two of them look like him. The second one looks a lot like the man she left her husband for. But of course they didn't get together until after she divorced her husband. Doesn't help how her new partner very clearly has a favorite kid. First husband's child support bill most certainly includes the third child though. I had a doctor that thought my boy wasn't mine because he came out blonde with blue eyes. I'm half native with dark hair dark green eyes and my dad is a blonde blue green eyed dude. My wife is a very dark brunette and her dad is a blonde blue green eyed dude. It got grandfathered in, he is tested genetically as mine. But the doctor was very, very iffy. Doctor here. I had a newborn patient who needed blood donation for surgery and was a rare type, ab. Family stepped in to get tested and see if anyone could donate blood for his procedure. Supposed. Dad tests O. Which would make it impossible for him to have an ab child, since the child gets the A from one parent and the B from the other. Someone else in the family donated and everything worked out in the end. But I wonder if this dad ever found out he wasn't the biological father. When I was a student nurse there was this one couple, mother was Asian and husband was white. The husband had a brother, African American. He is adopted from what I remember. The mother had been in labor for around 12 hours and they were very excited to see their baby. I remember the father had been pacing my entire shift back and forth in the waiting room. When it came time to mount the mother on the table he asked the doctor if he could be in the room. He was grinning like a madman. It was a very positive energy. You could almost get completely absorbed by it. The doctor was a nice guy he let us get him some throwaway scrubs and let him stay in the room. All in all the actual birthing process was pretty standard. However, when the baby came out then came the rough part. 
He was a normal healthy half African American boy, around 3 kilograms. I just looked at the baby then looked at the father and watched his face go from joy to puzzlement to horror in around 10 seconds. The mother called out for her child and the doctor being all business cut and suctioned the baby. I'm pretty sure at that moment the father broke because he sort of just stepped back and kept saying what the frick under his breath. I didn't get to see much of them for the next 2 hours but I was there when the mother was brought to her room. Her husband and his brother were there as well and she was talking to them. From what I saw she was trying to console her husband and his brother was trying to hug him. The husband kind of just kept shrugging off his brother's arms and crying into his hands. It was a really tough thing to see, but all in all it wasn't really as dramatic as you'd expect. Frick that breaks my heart. Not a doctor but I worked in adoptions. A couple showed up wanting to discuss adoption. She was so obviously pregnant. The catcher, she and he both insisted that they had never fricked, only heavy petting and they assumed some seamen had traveled through clothing. I don't know what happened because they never came back. Technically she can get pregnant without penetration, but it's very difficult. I'm a doctor, and the story actually involved my colleague. So I'm friends with this guy who we'll call nut in med school. We're not close friends, but we have some common friends. And we shared some rotations together. And this girl we'll name Mary. Mary was already married at the time and had a 3 year old daughter. Nut and Mary were close. But Mary got held back because Mary got pregnant and therefore had to temporarily stop studying. During that time, me and Nut became interns. And Nut began hanging out often with another girl named Belle. Nut and Belle weren't that close or physical with each other, so it came as a surprise when two months before internship ended, we found out that Belle was pregnant. Turns out that the two were frick buddies the entire time. Anyway, they graduated, and eventually Belle gave birth to a baby boy, who looked like Nut's miniature clone. It was as if the baby got nothing out of the mother, at all. Some of us even joked that Nut's seed was just that strong that he doesn't create offspring, he creates clones. Now, Mary eventually caught up with her studies, and entered junior internship so she got to rotate with some of us. And when she showed us the picture of her baby boy, he also looked, exactly, like, nut. Note that we knew what Mary's husband looked like, and what Mary's daughter looked like. Her son looked just like nut. So much that if you placed her son beside Bells, you could easily mistake them as twins. We did just that. Not sure what happened to them now, I moved to a nearby hospital, but I never really talked to any of the three. The last I heard from Nuts and my mutual friend, Nuts partner, he claimed he won't marry her, and son were left in a city around 4 hours away. Belle worked there, Mary's husband, daughter, and son were in the US Mary's husband was studying aeronautics or SMTH similar, and Nut and Mary were on duty the same day at the same hospital. If you ever find out what happened to them please update so we can bust this nut. Our Niku does not allow paternity testing to be done in patient and some of our babies stay with us for 3-6 months depending on their gestation. We've had a few luong and awkward waits for babies to get discharged before we could find out who the dads are. The two most recent cases were babies born at 23 and 25 week gestations both kids with 3 possible dads. None of the potential dads stayed involved in the 3 plus month hospital stay waiting to find out if they're the father. It's so awkward for the staff. I was a nurse for a urologic surgeon, so lots of vasectomies. Guy came in pee off that he had gotten his wife pregnant after his vas. He had never originally followed up to make sure his swimmers were dead. Doc had him leave a sample to look under the microscope, went back to the exam room and told him his vas had been successful. Guy just walked out. I read an article several years ago about a doctor who was involved in the studies about the RH blood factor in the late 1930s or early 1940s. The study took place in a New York maternity hospital and was done with married couples. Blood samples were taken from newborn babies, the mother and father, and tested. In about 10% of the cases, the results of the blood test for a couple didn't match what the RH factor should have been. The doctor went to the mothers alone and asked if the husband was actually the father. Most of the women admitted the husband was not or he might not be. This was back in the 1930s 1940s with married women. My husband is a surgical technician. Years ago he helped deliver a baby via emergency c-section. 
The baby was black and born to two very white parents. The dad freaked out and left the hospital with a mom in tears. The doctor convinced him to get a paternity test and he did end up being the father. Genetics is weird. I love genetics. We are a white family, but every now and then a much darker baby is born. We have a distant ancestor from Africa and still carry that gene. It's mainly the men that show it, but some of us girls definitely have non-Caucasian elements too. I work in a Niku and frequently babies will come down to our units accompanied by their father while mom is still getting stitched up and it is usually the time when fathers will question us about how to do a paternity test or they will ask us. Questions like does this baby look half black to you or would you say this baby could be mine or not. We've also had an occasion where mom has admitted to us dad isn't baby's father but we're not legally able to say anything so we just have to pretend we know nothing and we'll just submit a social work consult to look into the situation a bit more. Obligatory not a doctor fremulin. SHHH. But I know a couple that were very excited to have twins. Baby birthday comes. Mom and dad are in the delivery room. Baby one comes out and it's immediately clear they aren't his. He's white. She's white. The baby is R. Not. The community was shook. They're divorced now. 9-9. Nine, nine. I'm a father who had this happen to him. But it was fine. My wife and I adopted a set of embryos and my wife birthed them. The genetic parents are Chinese and Korean descendants. My wife and I are European descent. We let the doctors know, and they all agreed to not tell one of the doctors in training, resident or something like that, when he would come in to wiggle the twins legs and do all the stuff he would look at my kid's eyes then nervously glance at me, then do his exam and quietly walk out. I asked him a few questions about why they had such dark hair when my wife and I are lighter haired. He responded about grandparents and recessive genes. Pretty good future doc. On our second to last day in the hospital the staff told him and he was very relieved. He was scheduling a chaplain visit for us. Oh you cruel bastards. I love it. My dad told me this story. He was in co in the army. And one night he received a call that the wife of one of his soldiers was in the hospital having a baby. His first response was, so why are you calling me it turns out that the wife was 99.9% .9 sure the baby wasn't his and she needed someone to make sure he didn't go crazy at the hospital. So my dad drives down there, and he finds his soldier trying to push past the doctors into the delivery room. He's screaming that he has a right to, to be in there, etc. My dad puts his hand on his shoulder, a preface to physically restraining him, and tells him that he can't go in. The guy must have realized that he really wasn't getting him there, because he just sank to his knees, started crying, and kept saying I just wanted to see my son being born. It was apparent that he wasn't going to hurt anyone. So they got him to the waiting room and my dad left thinking I just watched the end of someone's marriage. Come Monday morning, the guy comes in with the biggest smile, walking around showing everyone pictures of his black baby. He was white. Of course, they questioned and ribbed him about it, but he would just proudly say that's my son. Best case scenario to a messed up situation. I'm not sure how the family is doing now, but it seems like the kid would grow up with a father, or two, who loved him. Okay, I have two stories that aren't exactly what the OP asked but still applicable. 1. A woman came to the O with abdominal pain. She was there with her girlfriend. We ran a pregnancy test per protocol. Don't ever trust a patient when it comes to physical relationship history. So I got to break the news to this lesbian couple that one of them was unexpectedly pregnant. And, yes, I tried to discreetly tell the patient the news alone. But she insisted anything I had to say should be done so in front of her girlfriend. Okay, but I don't think that was the prize she was expecting. Baby daddy showed up. Commotion ensued. Security had to get involved when girlfriend started attacking baby daddy. 2. A teenage mom brought her newborn to the air to be evaluated for something fairly minor. New parent. Didn't really know what she was doing. There was also this teenage guy in the room, so I asked his relationship to the patient. He said he was the stepdad. Apparently he had been dating the mom for a for about a month. Baby is about 3 weeks old. It took me a few minutes to wrap my head around that one. For his own sake, I really hope that dumb guy didn't sign the birth certificate. This happened to me actually. No one said anything to me about their suspicions. Two years later it comes out that my daughter wasn't biologically mine. 
By that time I only saw her as my daughter and nothing else. After months of depression and confusion I worked it out where I left the mom and I adopted the little girl. She's raised as my daughter and I don't see her any other way. A bigger man than most. Bravo sir. My cousin is white. Brown hair. Green eyes. Her hubby looks black. Dark skin hair eyes. Soon before the delivery of their son. The nurse says ooh I love caramel colored skin. She was very quiet when a pale white baby. Blonde hair and blue eyes popped out. Dot. My cousin's hubby's father was also born blonde hair blue eyes. He takes after his father's father lol. Yeah genetics are weird and stuff. But it's kinda weird to say that you love caramel colored skin. A friend of mine had been hearing rumors that his wife was cheating on him. He refused to believe them until he found out one day that there was Trey that is passed from parents to children. I wanna say cleft chin but it's not important. Anyways he went and got a DNA test done as he and his wife did not have the tray and it turns out it wasn't his kid. They tested their other two kids and he was only the father of the middle child the first and third child were from two different guys. He flipped out and punted her out the house and she in turn drained his business account and ghosted away while he started divorce proceedings. He lost almost everything but saved his business by changing the name and some other stuff so that it can't be used in the divorce settlement. He managed to keep the dogs which he tried to get custody of. The house was totally in his name so he was able to keep that too. He was really bad for a while stopped eating and crap but he is looking much better now and he has got a new girlfriend and seems happy again. The two older kids still pop to see him as they are over 18 but he hasn't seen the youngest as she is still a child. My cousin has dark skin, like our entire family is pasta white, but he looks hispanic. It was a joke for a long time in my family, including between he and his dad, about his dad not being his real father, like they'd call each other, alleged father and alleged son. Anyway, my aunt and uncle got into the whole ancestry.com thing like 10 years ago and turns out my aunts, who married into our family, great grandfather was black. She was pasta white like us, but apparently her mom had darker skin too but just looked southern Italian, which she also was. Maybe not related, but sort of a funny story. This is exactly my family. We are all pasta white but my brother was born with dark hair and very very tan. He is definitely my father's son. We have a couple cousins that are the same way. Aunts and uncles too. Was a postpartum nurse for several years. I had several dads say the baby wasn't theirs because the baby wasn't black enough and she must have been with a white boy behind his back. It takes a few days for the baby's pigment to darken. What I was taught by a senior nurse was that when you look at the baby's testicles if it's a boy, it will tell you how dark the pigment of their skin will be. But you could tell these men were just looking for any excuse to ditch out on the baby. Very sad. Just checked and can confirm that my skin tone of my testicles match the rest of my body. What is the worst case of I know better than my doctor you've ever heard of? Working at a supplement store years ago I had a woman come in asking about vitamin B17. She said her daughter had cancer and was taking her off of chemo despite her doctors pleading with her not to. Some friend of hers claimed B17 what a miracle vitamin they don't want you to know about and can cure just about anything. I told her she should listen to her doctors. She told me to frick off. For those who don't know, vitamin B17 isn't a vitamin. It's a compound called amygdalin. And eating it will give you cyanide poisoning. I'm a nurse. My patient's family member was telling everyone that the doctor was an idiot because, and I quote, what the frick do the kidneys have to do with the bladder? SMH. I had some parents trip out when their kid with a sore throat was later found to also have an ear infection. How did he come in with one infection and end up with another? They went on and on about the terrible food we serve and how dirty the hospital must be. Not realizing an infection in the throat has a direct pathway to reach the ear. Old man I knew always had a band-aid on his nose. He had a cancerous growth on it and he would cut it off himself. Would always say, all the doc will do is cut it off. I can do that myself and save $200. Guess who died when the cancer spread elsewhere? Some cancers will be triggered to grow rapidly and out of control if they aren't completely removed. About 15 years ago, before the whole gluten free trend, I worked with a guy who was a vegetarian. We worked side by side just the two of us and got along really well. One day, I got curious and asked what led to his vegetarianism. 
He told me he had been having some health problems and went to see the doctor. Doc ran some tests, and told my friend that he should cut wheat out of his diet. This guy says, well, that doesn't sound right. He must have meant meat instead of wheat. Double quote. A friend of mine had stage 4 cancer. She went through chemo for over a year, and they told her that they would let her take a break. Well when they looked at the cancer, it hadn't shrunk as much as they'd have liked. So they told her that she couldn't take a break. She started posting on Facebook about these organic green juice cleanses that someone had messaged her about. I was at her bedside begging her to keep doing the chemo. I told her that she could do the juice cleanses if she thought they'd help, but not to stop the chemo. She responded, but they won't work if I don't stop the chemo. That's poison in your body. I know my body, and it's going to heal it. She wound up entering hospice on her 30th birthday and passing about a month later. I'd love to find who peddled that balls to her and punch them right in their freaking mouth. Probably some MLM balls. They need to be ended. I met someone who insists that insulin makes their blood sugar get higher. So they don't take it. They also don't take to having all their toes or apparently the whole left foot. But hey, live and let die. My father was a stubborn bastard and was adamant about not following doctor's orders. Long time smoker, drinker, etc. So dear old father goes in and has them all excised from his dong. Uh oh, bias he comes back and it's not malignant. Great, problem. He didn't follow the doctor's order on how to take care of it after the fact. Gangrene, yep, they lopped it off. I only found out about that in my late teens. It was a mind shattering reveal from my mother and older sister. In many ways this is the best. When I was in 7th grade I hurt my pinky finger playing softball. But my dad being the assistant coach that he has told me I just jammed it. I told him I think I did more than that since my finger was completely numb yet in excruciating pain. Like I picked up the softball after it happened and it felt like there was a hole in the ball where my finger was supposed to be. Disregarding everything I was sobbing to him he decided to pull me finger since it was jammed. For the next couple months I continued to play softball. Thank god for Icy Hot and Advil. Where my dad said maybe it wasn't jammed since it still hurts you probably just got a bone bruise. Eventually my finger also developed a very solid bump on the side of my joint. Still there BTW. And the pain never really went away. When softball season ended we finally went to the doctor and had x-rays taken. When the doctor saw them he was amazed I still played since my bone was completely shattered into at least 6 piece. He said he couldn't give an exact number because of the healing and the angle of the x-rays. The bump on my finger was a calcium buildup from the healing which could have been avoided if I had gone to the doctors when it happened. The only good thing was that I didn't need to have my finger rebroken to fix the placement of any of the fragments since my dad pulled it initially. Go to love coach dads. I have a ton of these. But most recently had a teen patient who had lost speech for a couple days. They got better. And when I saw them again with their mom I went over the tests we had done and started discussing some of the possible causes. Mom interrupted me and said don't say anything else. I'm a firm believer that if you don't tell someone their diagnosis they can just heal on their own. Literally didn't want me to tell her anything because she thought saying words out loud would give her kid diseases. Oh. Same day I had a lady tell me that she was refusing treatment because she read a study where a guy treated hundreds and hundreds of patients with normal saline and had a 100% success rate. Yeah, okay lady. I know someone with a master's degree who believes her friend the massage therapist cures people with AIDS seriously massages, teas, enemas and crystals and meditation no more AIDS I fassa palmed so hard I nearly broke my nose. My sister refused a surgery that would have removed her uterus, cervix, and part of her bowel or bladder. I forget, thus getting rid of her cervical cancer because what man would love me this way she left behind 4 kids under the age of 18. The youngest being 4. That's really freaking sad. I manage social media for a public health agency. All our immunization vaccine related posts have been getting swarmed by anti-vaxxers lately. No medical training and anecdotal evidence and cherry picked data equals we know better than science. They've now branched out to hit some of our other posts too. Breastfeeding promotion, cancer, HPV, etc. And it's getting to the point where I just want to give up. Which I guess is their goal, 
because they certainly aren't going to sway anyone with their dozens of long winded comments on a single post. You freaking keep up the good fight and don't let up. With all the disinformation spreading about you are playing a big part in helping to shine a light through the BS and educating the upcoming generations. I had a patient with stage 2 bladder cancer, young man, in his 40s. He needed to have his bladder removed but he didn't want to, instead, he had the medicinal healer at the commune he lived in do some herbal therapies and artery adjustment. He was dead within a year, from a fairly curable disease. This story is pretty common. I've had another patient go to Mexico for non-FDA approved treatments. They don't usually do very well and they usually regret it. I have to bite my tongue when I see them back with much worse disease. Friend of mine sees way too many of these cases on a daily basis. But the worst one so far has to be this lady whose child was born premature, so her baby was rather small to begin with. The doctors do their usual thing. Gives her advice on childcare and everything. And she comes in a week later saying her kid was sick. Not sure why. Friend was appalled to find out that her baby had barely put on any weight since birth. And immediately asked her what in the world had she been been feeding the kid. Woman says. Oh I figured since he was so tiny. He didn't need to eat that much. So I've been sticking to about an ounce of milk per meal. Seriously. Woman. I don't know how the child's doing now but I can only hope he is well. A family with 7 kids, the oldest was barely 18 and the youngest too, their father died of cancer, didn't do chemo or anything, then their mother got cancer and decided essential oils would cure it, left all of the kids behind to basically be raised by their sister or split up. My mother believes that if you make food from scratch then it's healthier for you, for instance, she thinks that making a chocolate cake from scratch, including milling her own flour, is a healthier alternative to a store-bought cake with identical ingredients. She is diabetic. Her doctors have said in as many ways as they can think of that she has to reduce her carb intake and what my mother thinks is, gosh, maybe I should grow the sugarcane myself instead of buying sugar at the store and my blood work will finally be in the normal range. Her liver and pancreas have failed multiple times. Each time, the doctors managed to restore organ function by restricting her carb intake. They explain that she has to continue to follow a low carb diet at home. She does not, because she's convinced that she's already on a healthy diet. Rinse and repeat. My friend is treating her Lyme disease by going to a chiropractor, using essential oils, and getting massages, obviously against her doctor's advice. My mom tans in tanning beds constantly to the point where she looks like the outside of a baked potato. I told her one day she should stop because she can get skin cancer, and she told me that it's not possible with tanning beds. Worked for an ophthalmologist and had two distinct idiots at fittest category. The first one claimed she no longer had glaucoma, she had prayed it away, her eye up begged to differ. The other was scheduled for cataract surgery and he came in for his pre-op appointment, only to tell us he had spoken with God, and God told him he didn't need surgery. I told the doctor and she said sure cancel it, I don't feel like arguing with God today. Ha, huh. had a patient last month who was 20 stroke 200 in his better seeing eye from giant cataracts and decided he didn't want cataract surgery because I prayed to God to give my sight back and I know he will. I told him to come back in 6 months. And that he was not allowed to drive. Because he was still driving but only during the day to be safe. I teach people on a daily basis how to use urinary catheters. You aren't supposed to reuse them. Just use it once. Throw it away. And when you need to catheterize again, open a new one. That's because using a non-sterile catheter can cause urinary tract infections and a host of all kinds of other problems. The doctor will send us a script for how many per day the patients need to use. And every single day, without fail, I'll have at least one or two tell me that their doctor is wrong and they only need one per day. Because they'll just wash it off and reuse it. Number. It literally says on the packaging not to do that. Your doctor said not to do that. I'm telling you not to do that. Why do you still think it's okay to do that? Money is the reason. They know they shouldn't. But a fixed income is a fixed income. Saw this on the news in Alabama a few years ago. Child got bitten by a timber rattlesnake. Mother said 9. 1. 1 wasn't necessary because she had a home remedy that her grandmother had passed down and all the child needed was to drink the remedy. Take some ibuprofen. 
and lay down a few hours and she'd be good as new. Child Dangna died. Mother lost all three of her children and was charged with felony neglect and endangering a child. I lived in Alabama for a while, and a lady swore to me that since her dog had been bitten by a copperhead once already, he was immune to snake bite now. If I didn't know she only had two kids I would swear this was her. My friend was a bodybuilder, suffered a heart attack at a young age due to the fricked up status quo of the sport, and was ordered not to work out. He responded by finding a gym out of town and working out there. He had another heart attack while at that gym and never regained consciousness. I don't think he was arrogant, just addicted, but he left a very, very sad wife behind in addition to a huge group of friends. Because he was as sweet as a big, swole, meathead could possibly be. And he was a little kid in need of a place to hide out from his insane home life when we met him. So he was our little baby. Even though ended up having 100 pounds more muscle than the rest of us. I don't know why I'm writing this. But I loved him and writing feels better than not writing. Please take care of yourselves. And don't let anything so preventable happen to you. Couple that was super into fitness. Husband gets pneumonia. They decide the best treatment is specially formulated meal plans and vitamin shots. He died in his wife's arms during the middle of the night. That's how pneumonia is a nasty way to go. He should have gotten to the point where he simply wasn't breathing right. Breath sounds saturated and rattling. And he's unresponsive. Gray. In other words obviously dying how did she ignore that and not call an ambulance? My ex-mother-in-law would always have mixed leftover prescriptions of antibiotics in the medicine cabinet. She would only use medication until she started to feel better, then she would shelve the rest. When she or someone in her family got sick, she would administer what she considered to be a good dose. I tried to explain to her that an antibiotic prescription only works if you follow the directions and take the whole bottle in the correct intervals. She replied they only say that to get more money. She will be 70 soon and seems to get diagnosed with a new life threatening disease every couple of years but still going strong. How to create antibiotic resistant bacteria 101. My brother in law has chronic back pain and regularly goes to a chiropractor for it. And apparently said chiropractor also works on my bill's neck. After one chiropractor appointment, my bill experienced severe weakness to the point where he could hardly get out of bed. At one point, apparently, he collapsed and had slurred speech. I, an RN, was like, dude, get thee to the hospital because that sounds like a stroke. At the time of this conversation, I was also hanging out with another nurse who used to work in neurology, and she agreed he should see a doctor ASAP. He was like, nah, my chiropractor's a doctor and knew about it and said it would go away. He's very much an old health kind of guy and thinks stuff like vitamins and coconut oil will cure anything. I remember looking after this one guy who came in post myocardial infarction from the cath lab. His blood pressure, BP, was sky high. Patients denied any major health issues in the past and he only took supplements. I called the doctor about his BP and doctor ordered some antihypertensive pills. Before the patient took them, he ranted about big pharma and how drugs don't work and that, if he were just allowed to go home to take his usual herbs or whatever, he'd be fine. Judging by the fact that his BP refused to come down after the pills and required an IV nitroglycerine infusion, his ECG showed signs of left ventricular hypertrophy typically caused by high BP over time, and the fact that he had a massive heart attack showed me that his heart problems had been brewing for a while and, as expected, his herbal supplements were doing squat. Dude, get thee to the hospital because that sounds like a stroke. That is an acceptable use of old and new English. Well that whole thing with Steve Jobs is pretty high up that list. The worst thing is he had the kind of pancreatic cancer that's actually treatable. He had a chance to save himself that 98% of people with his disease don't and he threw it away. My dad had a heart attack and went to the emergency room. While he was there he coded 8 times, his heart stopped and he had to be revived. He survived and they admitted him. He had a lot of damage. After a couple of weeks he checked himself out because them goddamned buttholes don't know what the heck they're talking about. He was found dead of heart failure about 3 weeks later. I'm sorry to hear this. This mentality is common where I grew up, 
A lot of older folks decided that they knew better than doctors who attended medical school for years and worked on patients for decades. Because the common sense they got on the bean farm apparently trumped the decades of experience their doctors had gained. Young bubbly mother I know was diagnosed with breast cancer, tried alternative meds as promoted by her flaky girlfriends. Eventually she returned to the doctor who told her it was too advanced to do anything. She died leaving a little boy for her husband and extended family to care for. I still believe her friends contributed to her premature death. Not my doctor, by my mom's. My mother had a heart attack February of 2017. She was prescribed a couple medications such as beta blockers, etc. My aunt, who's against vaccinations, prescribed medications, and anything non-organic, tried to not only tell my mom the medications she was prescribed were the wrong ones, per a quick 10 minutes wikipedia search, but also that my mom's heart attack must 100% have been health related despite multiple tests and the doctor telling her it was simply stress induced. I'd also like to add that we called my aunt immediately after the ambulance arrived to take my mom to the hospital, and she said she wasn't going to make the 40 minutes trip to the hospital unless it was serious. She has also done the same I know better than everyone bit in other health related situations, and she's the type of person you cannot disagree with because the conversation will go nowhere. Very aggravating to say the least. While talking with my OB and asking a ton of questions about my pregnancy, he told me a story. He was the on-call doc for a hospital and goes in after shift change from another on-call doc. Woman has been actively pushing for 3 hours. She has refused a c-section multiple times over because she's certain she can have the baby naturally. It turns out, baby was stuck and the pushing caused major brain damage to the baby. My doc tried to persuade her but she continued to refuse. Ended up having to do a c-section to retrieve the body. Women often have this overwhelming expectation of how their labor and birth is going to go. Avoiding c-section and meds like the plague. The reality is, those things have saved many lives. Probably me. I've talked about this before but I'll share again a sort of a sar. I was addicted to a drug called Mersindal which contains a relaxant plus codeine plus paracetamol. It started at 2 tablets a day, then 4, then 8. After a couple of years I was taking 40 plus a day. I thought all the warnings about don't take more than 8 a day were stupid. I was all I take 40 a day so I'm fine. I went to hospital for an unrelated issue with my eye and they freaked about how much paracetamol was in my system. I lied and said I took heaps due to pain in my eye. They tested my liver and it was inexplicably fine. From there I realized just how close I was coming to death daily. I had built up a major tolerance but generally 40 plus paracetamol is enough to kill two people. It's insanely lethal. It took me another year to give it up and have researched it a lot now. People think Panadol Tylenol is harmless. It's not. People take heaps, wake up fine and think they're safe. In reality overdose symptoms don't appear until you're literally dying and there's nothing they can do to save you. You have a 24 hour window to have your life saved. Even if you build up a tolerance it doesn't mean you're safe. I am the exception to the rule. TL. DR. Was addicted to a drug that contained paracetamol. Thought warnings on the packet were stupid. They are not. Tylenol Panadol Paracetamol or whatever name you know it as. It's insanely lethal. Read the packet instructions and do not deviate. You are not a doctor. Americans. Paracetamol is known as acetaminophen here in the US. Every person who has opted to treat a diagnosed condition with naturopathic medicine. I've diagnosed patients with cancer who have shunned modern treatments only to turn up months later with horrible stage IV disease asking for miracles. I'm all for taking herbal supplements to prevent disease, but when you're finally diagnosed with a condition, stroke, heart attack etc you need the prescription stuff. In the NWI frequently admit patients who seek emergent medical care for a condition only at discharge for them to say, yeah I'm going to go see a naturopathic doctor are ya. But frankly I'm bewildered that it's not considered unethical or illegal to advertise statistically scientifically unproven therapies to people. Had a guy keep coming in, three times, with a heart attack, we'd save him only for him to sign out of the hospital saying god will cure me why bother coming then. I had to finally call his pastor to convince him to stay and get all the right treatment. You have been visited by the magical sugar jar puggo. He'll only share his sweetener if you comment sugar please, Mr. Pupper. 
Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.